Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we just praise you. We thank you for the things that are happening across the world right now. And we especially praise you for those of us who are able to become and try our best to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Those of us who understand that when our mouths are filled with laughter and our tongues are filled with singing, then the unrighteous will say amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Psalm 126, verse 2, praise God. Father, we just thank you. Father, we pray that we will have Nepho hearts amidst the days that we have, even amongst us now, but yes, Father, ever so much more so in the days to come, because we are only at the very beginning of the unfolding of the Olivet Discourse. We are only at the very beginning of the beginning of sorrows. We have not entered yet into the sorrows period, although we know that we could be jettisoned into that period very rapidly and that there will be an event and probably multiple mega events that occur that we will be a part of, that will be part of our testing. But yet at the same time, we recognize that we must maintain our joy. If our mouths are not filled with laughter, if we are not able to demonstrate the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ at all times, to those around us, we will not be able to bring Jesus in as the lights of the world or bring the people and the unrighteous and the unbelievers in to the light of the world, which is our King and our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of all of this screaming and, and fussing and panic and hysteria that is happening across the world when people aren't even looking at the basics of the numbers, they're responding to the government, re government response, they're looking at the global situation, yet they do not understand the basics of, of being able to analyze the situation and the true impact of it. They're only looking at the response of it, which is a human response, which is utterly illogical, hyper. It's a hyper cycle on a level that I've never seen before, Father. I know that you know this, but this is a glorious thing. This is a glorious thing because this will help uh, those of us, the people that do not understand these things and the people that are on the seven mountains that are part of the believers of, of, of Christianity slash churchianity, little c Christianity in some cases. Father, whatever it is, the pillow prophets that have been out there telling people that, that the United States is, has, is now married again to Jesus and that we're somehow blessed. Now, Father, that wall of separation has been broken down divinely by you, and we are able to map this event e e no matter how low impact it actually is. We're able to map this event back to the global scope that is required. It has penetrated the borders of the United States of Babylon the Great. Finally, we thank you, Jesus. And it has come to a place where we are no longer able to separate ourselves from the rest of the 243 countries of this world. And that maybe there will be a teeny weeny little subset of Christians that will awaken and no longer follow the pillow prophets. And that they will understand the days that we have come into. But yet, do we remain Nepho? Father, do we remain Nepho? Do we, are we wise as serpents? Do we understand that we are to judge the prophecies? We are commanded indeed, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, that we are to judge the prophecies. And, oh, Lord, we're not doing a real good job of that, and please forgive us. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that there will be unity, love, and that our mouths will be filled with laughter, that our tongues will be filled with singing, that we will understand and be able to think through these things, rationalize through these things, and understand being wise as serpents, putting our thinking caps on, and really taking a serious look at what is happening reasonable does it align with the bible because if we don't use the bible we thank you father for this understanding if we don't use the bible as our guide our guiding light as our defined a uh, plumb line amidst the chaos of the world and the screaming and the panic and all the noise that's out there on youtube and from professed christians and people sending emails and letters and communications around panicking because they have some type of respiratory virus and had a very ill effect Father, these things happen every day, but yet we have to keep them in perspective because there are nuclear bombs that are going to be set off in this country and other countries worldwide. There, there are it, it, The things that are coming are so horrific, and we need to just somehow remain wise, remain full of joy, remain full of laughter, understand that your holy, righteous right hand, oh, indeed, your fingerprint of love is on all these things and that these are by your perfect design as part of the birth pangs to help those who are not awake yet to maybe awaken. Those who are believing the pillow prophets and those who are believing other prophecies that are, well, exaggerated by the emotions that get involved in the human side of prophesying. Father, we just praise you and we ask you for your discernment 
We ask you for your peace. We ask you for the, the joy of our salvation, as David said in Psalm 51, to be placed upon our heart and to completely overwhelm us, understanding that we are eternal beings of light and love, and this is only a place that we are moving through, and that we are your servants. And we are privileged in only that regard, not by country, not by flag, not by creed, not by race, not by anything. There is neither Jew or Gentile. There is neither man or woman. We are all one body through Christ and in love. And we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for seeing that big picture. Because the days ahead are going to make today, all the noise that's happening today, look like it wasn't even worth paying attention to at all. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for any wisdom that you have imparted through the Holy Spirit upon those of us who see through the noise, see through it, and are able to seek your joy as we move on to the next day and the next day, anticipating the real judgments to hit the earth. We praise your holy name and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a coronavirus alert. This is a coronavirus alert. This is a coronavirus alert. There's no alert. There's no alert. Calm down. Calm down for crying out loud. What are you doing? Stop it. No, leave that toilet paper on the shelf. There's little children. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Have we ever seen anything like this? Kids, what do you think of all this craziness out there? Uh, kids, you know what? This show is for you. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> all right. Yeah, because you know what? You're smart Jesus, kids. You have wisdom. You have wisdom that goes beyond being wise as a serpent. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever seen anything like this in your entire life? But that's the best part. See, in the grand scheme of all this noise that is going on out there, and it really is just noise, but, but, you know, and you're like, but people are dying, but people are dying. Well, there were 18,000 seasonal flu deaths in 2019 alone, but we're only sitting at about 5,000 worldwide right now with the coronavirus. What about the 290 million deaths that occur per year? What about the 11 Christians that are killed each day for a total of 4,015 per year? What about 1.25 million car crashes that result in death, which is 3,287, which is almost the total of coronaviruses thus far? But yet we can't keep things in perspective. We are failing to be wise as serpents as Jesus commanded us to. Boy, boy, oh boy, are we going to get our tiny cheeks kicked by the serpents that are out there walking around and shape-shifting because we are just knee-jerking, as it says in, uh, in, in the book of James. You know, um, uh, uh, you know I think it's um, you know, one five or whatever. You know, it's talking about our faith and, you know, and seeking God and asking for you know, his wisdom. But you know, it says that if we don't have it, you know, we'll be tossed to and fro. You know? Well, what are we being? What, what, what are we now? We're being tossed to and fro. Uh, You know, I think one of the most I've I've come to this conclusion in my heart, and I know that I believe in my heart that the reason why the Lord has put me in the job that I'm in is it forces me to come out of my Maxwell Smart cone of silence. So so what happens is, you know, because I uh, work from home, I have, you know, there's uh, I have this my life has been placed in this place and I can't explain it any other way. I don't know how to. All right. But I'm just saying that it's been placed in this weird sort of place where while I work at home, I get the perspective of many of the people that are retired, many of the people out there that are believers that are have, you know, they're living in small little towns like Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, like Warren Peterson is. And, and you know, and, and so I get to see and, you know, and, and people that are, you know, are shut ins and uh, praise God for that. And, you know, and because we all have our place. And that allows us to see things through different sets of eyes. But as the body of Jesus Christ, we need to share notes. Iron sharpens iron. And that's not really happening out there. What we have is people out there that be, believe that they were ordained by God to, to put up a YouTube channel or they were called into a prophetic ministry or whatnot, but yet they're out there doing things that they're not really called to do. And then they goof up and tell people it's okay to shoot people, you know, on your way to heaven. Oh, it's okay. You know, never mind. Uh, you know, never mind Jesus' example, uh, you know, carrying his cross to his death to save one more soul. No, 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 no. I'm going to convolute the scripture. 
And I'm going to go out there in my office of the prophet, and I'm going to explain what the Bible's really saying about shooting people on your way to heaven. Okay, but the situation is, is, is dire. We've gotten into a place right now with Tribulation House program that we bring guests on the show, and they look great. And even while they're on the program speaking, for the most part, for the majority of the program, they're doing great. And we're like, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, because we're never really sure. But yet in the last couple of years, um, there have been guests that we brought on that have just blown us away. And, 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 and it started out really great, and everything was happening, and then later it was like the Lord was like telling me, take it down. Like this last Wednesday show, I, had the, I, had, I got a takedown order. It wasn't a copyright takedown order, but I got a takedown order from the Lord. The Lord was like, take down that show that you did Wednesday night. And the reason I had to do that was because there was too much bad-mouthing of Christians by name. Can't, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. Now, if you call out a particular behavior or an issue, you know, like mentioning million dollar jets or whatever the case is, and you're trying to make a point, that's one thing. But we have to understand that Jesus said, and, and, and uh, you know, and I, I, and again, I could sit here and quote scripture after scripture. There's scriptures in James, there's scriptures in John. Um, you know, I have a lot of these uh, documented and I keep track of them. But again, First John 4.20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, which the word hate basically means what we're seeing out there, you know, calling, calling out, you know, I'm, you know, doing this or I'm calling them out. Well, the very fact that you're mentioning it by name is an act of hate in the father's eyes. It says, if I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. And he does not love his brother whom, he, you know, it says, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So you see, and it says, and this commandment we have from him, our father, that he who loves God must love his brother also. We got James 4.11, speak no evil of the brother. It says, do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother judges his brother, speaks evil of the law and judges the law. So there's another admonishment. You got John 13.35, by this you will, by this all will know, all the people of the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Wait a minute. What if we're going out on public shows, YouTube channels, and we're disparaging, disparaging brothers and sisters by name? Ah, you failed. And you are causing discord amongst the brethren, Proverbs 6, 16. And I'm totally paraphrasing this because I don't have time to look every single one. If I sat there and said, flip with me, brothers and sisters, to Proverbs 6, 16. And these six things the Lord hates, yes, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift that you've given me to be able to at least memorize and remember a lot of these from my heart, even if I don't hit them perfectly every single time. And, the, and, 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 this, and what, is the, what is the seventh one? To sow discord amongst the brethren. We need to get our heads out of the sand. We need to stop thinking that we're special. We need to stop thinking that we're somebody that, you know, we're preordained before the foundations of the earth. We're the remnant. We're the remnant. We're chosen as the bride of Jesus Christ. You know what? If we're out there disparaging people, you ain't going to make the bride. You don't even have a shot at it. You're not going to get within 10,000 feet of becoming part of the bride of Jesus Christ. You're not going to make the rapture. And if you don't believe in the rapture and you're telling people that there isn't one, well, you're not coming either. Sorry, but I got to tell you what I've learned over the last 10 years or I wouldn't be doing my job. And I know I have to stand before Jesus, and I know I have to stand before the Father, and I fear him, but I love him. I love him with all of my heart. I adore him, and I feel horrible for the times that I've goofed up. And I am raising my hand because I am uniquely qualified as someone who has goofed up more than most. And I know what it's like to do a radio show for 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and be alarmist. Oh, no, the sky is falling. Run around, run around. Coronavirus, end of the world. Oh, no, look, there's Houston floods, and the floods in Houston are the beginning of God's judgments. This is terrible. And then I'm going to come out and prophesy. Yea, saith the Lord of hosts, the beginning of the prophecy and the judgments upon the earth has begun. The beginning of the judgments has started on the United States. Tun, tun, tun. See, I personally am following the Bible, and when I look at 1 Corinthians uh, 14, it says to judge the prophecies, and I know that we prophesy in part, and we all see through the mirror dimly, and I'm like looking at these prophecies, and I'm going, they're inaccurate. I'm not calling them false prophets. I'm simply saying that we prophesy in part and that we're all human. We make mistakes, and we need to recognize those mistakes. Let's pray in Jesus' name that we recognize those mistakes before it's too late because a lot of the prophets that are out there right now, they're forfeiting their inheritance, and it's not about salvation, folks. It's about forfeiting your inheritance and rewards, okay? That's how it works. Galatians 5.19 isn't about going to hell. 
It's about these who practice such things shall not inherit. Inherit. Why don't we pay attention to the Bible for crying out loud? I don't understand this. It drives me crazy. There are people behind the pulpit, people doing YouTube videos, people out there saying this, that, and the other thing, and they don't even look at the words that are in the Bible. Galatians 5.19 is about inheritance and rewards. It's not about going to hell. And everybody's like, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. No, God is much more merciful than that. God is way, way, way more merciful than that. People don't even understand the concept of the outer darkness. Oh, all the foolish virgins are going to hell. Well, they wouldn't be virgins to the bridegroom if they were going to hell in the first place. Don't you understand the metaphor? Don't you get the – but nobody gets it. It, 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 It's so mind-shockingly blowing. I cannot – and then we bring people on the show, and they're they're doing and saying things, and and I was like, yes, yes, you're calling out the behaviors that are wrong. You're calling out the behaviors that are wrong. This is great. Hallelujah. We we need to do that. We need to do like David Wilkerson did. He would go on shows, you know, and he would would come out, and he would explain the behaviors that were wrong. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't be listening to pillow prophets. Shouldn't be listening to pillow prophets. That, That is a message from David Wilkerson. Praise God. Through the Holy Spirit. But but what do we do? We go out there. We name names. We do all kinds of things we shouldn't be doing. We teach people it's okay to shoot people on your way to heaven. No, it's okay to shoot people on your way to hell. Oh, oh, oh Father, I'm sorry. Lord, 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 did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not shoot people in your name? Be gone from me, ye doers of lawlessness. I have not known you. But I was doing it in your name, Lord. I was protecting my family. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. But people can't connect the dots. They don't have spiritual discernment. It is completely devoid from the body of Jesus Christ. And people who are called to do one particular thing in the kingdom and do it relatively well are dorking up because they're going into other areas of specialization that they shouldn't even be dabbling in. But they are. And now those of us who are left on the outside of it, and I'm one of you. Look, I have been accused of being a false prophet with the best of them. I was lined up as as one of the top ten false prophets of the times we live in today. I was mentioned alongside of David Wilkerson, and I said, glory to Jesus. What a wonderful place. If I could be burned at the stake beside Brother Wilkerson, hallelujah. That's like dying on the cross beside Jesus because you were being accused of similar things. How glorious is that? Now, granted, if I stub my toe and I, you know, and it hurts a little bit, I'm like, because I'm a big baby. I can't help it. I was like that since I was a little kid when my mom was like giving me clipper cuts, you know, and I was like four or five years old. And I was like, you know, she used to, there were lots of Johnnies in the neighborhood, 39 Runyon Road, Hummelstown, Pennsylvania, 17036. <laughs> I used to, and then you can look it up on Google. You know, the house is still there. The, the little add on, you can even see the add on of the house to the right. The house was a lot smaller. My dad added on this section to it. <laughs> that was where my mom saw the flying saucer with, with her, her and Mrs. Yankee in the front yard on the folding chairs <laughs> and called my dad out and said, Prowl, Prowl, come outside. Look at it. You're not going to believe what you – you know, and it's like, are you kidding me? And now my – if I have a specialty, really, when you think about it, in the grand scheme of all the stuff that Tribulation now has been covering for the last 4,000 shows in 10 years, one of those things is the whole UFO phenomenon. Which is much, much bigger than people think. They're not all demons. No, 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 no. I'm not going to get into that. We, as a matter of fact, yesterday, if you really want to, if you really want to have your senses and sensibilities tingled, if you really want to put your thinking cap on, now, now, granted, there aren't a lot of people that can do, that, do this. Now, let me tell you something. The, the Peterson Chronicles radio show that aired on Saturday night, the night before today, which is you know uh, March fifteenth, my birthday. Ides of March, holy mackerel! The Ides of March. This guy's. You know what? <laughs> my name is John Seitzinger, right? Guess what? <laughs> what does that mean? Caller the time it means Yahweh has given Johanan, John. Yahweh has given Seitzinger. Seitz, S E I T Z. That's time singer 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 of the time eight o'clock is and all as well eight o'clock and all as well that is the guys that used to walk through the streets you know I, the johnny baptist is a nom de plume nom de plume praise god radio show now pray, praise god all right but anyway it you know but when you look at all the stuff that's happening out there you got to have a little bit of common sense we got to be wise as serpents we got to try to judge the prophets and the prophecies we, don't call them names don't call them names. Oh, but wait a minute, brother. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul tells us we need to judge our fellow brothers and sisters. Listen, it doesn't – yes, but 
you got to understand it. I, I prefer the word to, to discern as opposed to judge because we are told that judge not that ye be judged. We need to be very careful about our interpretations of the Bible and the words that are chosen to plug in there because our fellow interpreters from the past are also what we would call human. Oops. Now, you've got to use the common sense. How do you do it out of love? You don't stand up in the middle of the church and say, that man is having sex with his mom. <laughs> that is not out of love. The problem is we are so deeply buried in the flesh that we have no common sense. We're not wise as serpents. We don't understand love. We don't know how to behave out of love. All we want to do is grab a flies water and smack everybody around. You know, you're bad, you're bad. I'm going to name this name and that name and judge, 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 judge. Okay, well, then you can't reconcile the Bible over your behavior, and you certainly can't quote Bible verses and say, well, this is okay, because what you're doing is you're cherry-picking through the verses to justify your wrongful understanding and the iniquity that you have in your heart. Psalm 66, 18, if I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Guess what that means? If the person has iniquity in their heart, you can't trust their prophecies anymore. Now, will God use imperfect people? Yes, he will, and sometimes even aberrant and naughty prophets. Because they have a following, and our Father loves the people, and he's trying to get the word out. But watch out for their teachings, because they're not hearing from the Lord. It's tricky business, and so you have to – and because it's tricky business, we have to be wise as servants. We have to judge the prophecies. I, folks, I really, really desperately don't know how I'm going to do this with this incredibly insane job that I'm assigned to in my consulting world. And to get back to that whole consulting thing, if it wasn't for that… I wouldn't be pulled out of my solitary confinement world where I work remotely. When you're in the solitary confinement world, when you're retired, when you're looking at YouTube a lot, when you have limited exposure to the public, your mind gets carried away with you, which is, by the way, what happens right now with the coronavirus situation. Your mind gets carried away with you, and you stare at the TV, which is mind control, from the Satan, okay? Even with Trump speaking and saying there's going to be a national prayer, I'm sorry, but that's Satan, okay? Let's get things in perspective. The Bible is Jesus. It is the Word, and the stuff that comes out of the boob tube is Satan. Once we make that delineation, we're in a pretty good place, as long as you can just keep it that simple. Don't try to slice and dice it. I'm not saying that it's of Satan, because God... Romans 13, puts every ruler, including Nebuchadnezzar and Hitler, into place, ultimately. Oh, no, he said Hitler. When God raises his hand of protection away from a geographic area, Job 1, Job chapter 1, when he raises his hand of protection off of that area, whether a person or whether a geographic area, and allows Satan to do what he will, that's still an act of God. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says that even the good and the bad come from our Father, and we give praise in both. It rains on the just and the unjust, but you've got to be able to see this holistically. Holistically means from the very beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, and when you start putting it all together and you understand what true love is, true love doesn't disparage your brother publicly, even though that you have to pull him aside and gently – in the mouth of two or three witnesses, you need to pull them aside and say, brother, you can't have sex with your mom. Or we have to get you out of the church. You can't be part of the body of Christ if you're doing that stuff. That's what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 5. Not calling him out loudly. Now, anyway, but people don't understand love. People don't get it. Which, by the way, is underscored. And we're going to see this grow. We're going to see this dynamic grow across the world. People who profess to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Which, by the way, just because of their ignorance doesn't mean that they're not. It's that they're professing it. Which, by the way, calls us... To be careful, and but at the same time, acknowledge that they are to some degree. Okay, so we have to understand that even though they may be misguided, they need our prayers. So again, follow the follow the the um, the uh, example of the Amish. You know, it's it, it's it's shunning. That's what it's called. Is shunning. The, the Amish don't take the person that was naughty and like you know. Tie them up to a post and put hot coals under their fires and grab megaphones and say, this person is a bad person. I even have a little megaphone here. Let me see if I can do this. 
This person is a bad person. We are going to rat out this person. Yes, sir, we are. We're going to do it in a godly fashion. We're going to humiliate them in front of all of Christianity because that is who we are called to be. We are called to be snarky, judgmental, and mean. And if that is what, you know, and, 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 and for crying out loud, if we can't do it amidst the church and make us all look like we hate one another, uh, then we just aren't for proper Christians. For Jesus said uh, that they will kick you out of the synagogue. Yes, there will come a time that they kill you and, and do and think they're doing God a service, but they do this because they do not know the Father nor... Wait a minute. They do not know the Father nor me. Wait a minute. This... Oh, wait a minute. I digress. See, that's the key. They do not know the Father nor me. <clears throat> I don't want to be part of that group. Hallelujah. Jade Helm, 15. Do you remember Jade Helm? Remember the Jade Helm scare? Oh, no. And Christians were out there, you know, on their YouTube channels prophesying, this is it, this is it, this is the beginning of the end. Jade Helm. Dun, dun, dun. Kids, what do you think about Jade Helm? What about the prophetic predictions on YouTube out there about the beginning of the, the this is the beginning of the judgments of God upon Babylon the Great when Houston was flooding. Remember that, kids? <laughs> what about the prophecy out there that came out of the flesh and said, now, 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 it is now, now, it is happening now, in June, in, in the beginning of April 2017, and, and, and everybody was, I had people emailing me, should I even go to work? And I said, yes, of course. <laughs> Why is the serpents judge the prophecies? Know your Bible. Look at the things that Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse. Read Mark 13. Read. I'm not just saying this in passing. Please. We're all in this together. I'm not some preacher of a large megachurch. It's nothing like that. Believe me. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing a happy-go-lucky, you know, make you laugh a little bit about the coronavirus problem because you know what? We got to learn to keep things in a perspective. We need to learn how to do basic math. Here's how you do it. Take the total number of people infected. No, I'm sorry. I got it backwards. Got to get my mathematics correct because math is my forte. Okay. The multiplicative inverse of the distance of the galaxy is inversely proportional to the distance of the sun at 93.1 million miles. And that is how I figure everything out. No. <laughs> what you do is you take the total number of people that died, 1,027, for example, and then you – Divide into that number, so you type in that number, then you hit divided by, on your calculator, the total number of people infected. Total of number of people that died, total, divided by, total number of people infected, times 100. And that gives you the percentage of people that are dying. And again, 18,000 deaths from the seasonal flu, 2019, 290 million deaths a year from all sorts of things. 11 Christians killed per day for 4,015 4, per year. That's an estimation, but it's probably much worse now. 1.25 million deaths from car crashes, 3,287 per day. Perspective. Pers uh, like, like Jim Gaffigan would say, perspective. He heckles himself. That you gotta love that. Praise God. Um, you know, no, I I, I pray for him. I have prayed for him. Uh, I I like to listen to him because he's clean, but at the same time, I don't think he's really saved. So I pray for him and his wife. But anyway, and his kids. All right. So oh, also thank you, Jesus. A shout out to all those who are just loving and sweet and kind. Because in the middle of these days, you can believe with all of your heart that <laughs> loving and kindness, and you know, like the Bible says, the love of many will wax cold. It's like. <laughs> So that is an understatement. So a shout out to every single person that has sent me the love of Jesus. And you know what? I can't believe that you took the time to send me a uh, happy birthday message um, for today. And I will just go ahead and... Um, you know, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ooh, yeah. Thank 
you, Jesus. Psalm 126, verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 2. Then our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongues with singing. Then they said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Who said that? The unrighteous. It is our joy as we see these things. This is a wonderful thing. Coronavirus is not a wonderful thing because anybody is dying, and it's never a wonderful thing that anybody is dying. But it is, again, perspective, understanding these things. And, oh, by the way, I'm going to use this analogy real quick just to help people understand the challenge behind this. And um, let me tell you something. If somebody has made up their mind that they're going to be afraid, you better stand out of the way. If somebody has made up their mind that they're going to be afraid, you best get out of their way. And you're like, what, what do you mean? Let me give you this analogy. <clears throat> you're in an AMC theater. And by the way, I almost didn't want to do this show at all, but then when I thought about it being uplifting and putting a smile on people's face amongst the insanity that is happening out there and the prophecies that are coming out that are, once again, overstated because they're getting tossed to and fro. Um, anyway, the Lord, the Lord gave me a revelation this morning through some people, praise God, uh, and uh, a friend of mine, Kristen Jestrom, and also uh, the work of another believer, Elizabeth Vans uh, Evans Parish, out on YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook. Um, uh, it, it hit me like a ton of logs. I was, this was being shared with me this morning and I was like, that's it. That is it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because we need to look, we need to learn to have joy. While we see people punching each other out in Costco's in Brooklyn, I had a conversation with um, Brother Peterson on the phone. He lives in Rapid City, uh, South, South Dakota. And um, he was like, I've never seen anything like this. People are, you know, while they were calm, they were in huge lines. The place was overwhelmed, and, you know, they're wiping out toilet paper and all this kind of stuff. We already know about that, right? Right. The problem is people are acting fantastically irrationally. So the lesson to be learned is an impact-driven lesson. If the impact is actually a, a, on a scale of one to ten. If the imp- and this is not a show for people that, that don't understand um, critical thinking skills. And again, the uh, understanding the concept of uh, calling fire. And I'm just going to say, make a note here: calling fire uh, in, in in a theater. Okay, I'm going to make a note here because I don't want to forget this. this. is a very key point. All right. All right, praise God. So, so this is a, a wonderful thing in the sense that, you know, on, a, on an impact scale of 1 to uh, 10, it's only a 1 at the very most. It's, it's really kind of less than a 1, really. When you look at the grand scheme of things that are coming upon us, the judgments of God that are queued up, they're teed up. They're queued right up. When they're going to happen, we don't know. Is everything going to go back to normal after this whole coronavirus thing blows over? Probably. I know there's a lot of people out on YouTube that are like, this is it, this is it. But I've been, I've been listening to this is it for 10 years. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I'm not going to be that person. Sorry. I am nothing if I am not anti-mainstream Christianity. And guess what? So is the bride of Jesus Christ. She has, she has all her f- trust and faith in, in Jesus. She sees joy. And Timothy 1.15, I'm sorry, Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure. We don't, we're not from here. We are love and light beings. We will be translated and turned into Jesus when we stand before him. We will be like him. Why shouldn't we be striving to be like that now? Why shouldn't we be holy, which means separated? Away from all things of the earth, which includes all the hysteria, all the noise, being wise as serpents. Even when the nuclear bombs are going off, we should be prayerful, praiseful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What? Praising God because nuclear bombs went off? Yes. Yes. Isaiah 26, 9. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. We should be thanking God because if it wasn't for those nuclear bombs going off, 
millions of people would end up in hell. Our Father knows what He's doing. He has the godly supercomputer of all the universes at His disposal, which is His heart. Psalm 119.62, At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. We have to understand Isaiah twenty uh, Isaiah um, fifty seven one the righteous perish, but no one takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, but while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil and precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm one sixteen fifteen God looks at everything eternally, everything eternally. Oh, but it says that He will bless me, He will prosper me eternally, eternally. It's not about your time on the earth. We got to look past the things of the earth. When we, do, when we fail to do that, we don't get it. All right, amen? So when things are in an impact level ten or 1, on a scale of 1 to 10, but the response is a response that is exceeded the 1 to 10 scale, it's a 12, which is what we're seeing now, we have a problem because it's not adding up. But the vast majority of Christians and the vast majority of humans cannot see that. Because the vast majority of Christians are in the flesh, and the vast majority of humans are in the flesh. So what happens is we have an impact issue of a 1, but a response issue, again, a scale of 1 to 10, of a 12. Response is a 12. They're freaking out, and they're doing all kinds of irrational things. They're buying up toilet paper and doing all kinds of craziness, and food and everything else under the sun. And hand wipes, hand wipes. Folks, think about it. This is, this is a bioweapon. It was designed to overcome the limitations of the seasonal flu. It is communicable before there are symptoms. Yet, the government is telling us to respond to it just like the seasonal flu. It ain't going to work. It isn't going to work. But you know what? It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter because the numbers do not add up to anything to be concerned about. Yesterday, I went out for a birthday dinner with my daughter, who I don't get to see very often, even though she lives pretty far, you know, or, or, or very close. And we were just amazed. We were like, you know, I said to her, she was worried, and I, was, I said to her, did you look around you? As you were driving past a Costco, as you're driving, you know, did you see the in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see all the cars, the people jamming everything into their trunks? I said, as I was driving to the restaurant, I said, then I went by a golf course, and there was people golfing. I drove by a, a, another group of children playing and another group of people getting together to ride bike and just going about life as normal. You have the alarmists. They're freaking out, buying toilet paper, and I, beating each other over the head in a Costco, yelling at each other. Arr, la, 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 la. And what do we see on TV? All the insanity. Why? Because they are programming us. They are programming us. They want to create the insanity. They want to create the civil unrest. They want to create the horror. They want to put up the FEMA checkpoints. They want to put up all of these things from the national emergency. They want to assign uh, National Guards people. They want us to see the military vehicles around. They want us. They're programming us for the things that are about to happen. But is it this? No, it's not. This is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. It's beyond nothing. Do I recommend that you had colloidal silver? I did, of course. I, you know, why wouldn't you? I would recommend that you also take vitamin C. I would recommend that you wash yourself every day because you might get various skin diseases. These are normal things that are a part of our life. Oh, no, I'll turn into a blue man. <laughs> Please. For every little tiny thing that the Lord gives us as a holistic pure uh, uh, a holistic method of dealing with some of the things that are coming upon this earth. <sighs> Satan will attack it. He'll do a counterattack. You know, and I've had to deal with that. It's like, you know, you make me recommend colloidal silver, and I'm going to turn into some kind of a blue freak from the, you know what, you know what, you have a respiratory illness. You are in the, in the elderly age group. You are on oxygen, and you are going to die if you get this virus. And I'm afraid to turning blue colored. It's a farce. It's a lie from the devil. It's counterintelligence. If you drink 50 gallons of this stuff, maybe your head will pop off. It's a tablespoon a day for crying out loud. Where is our brains? 
Oh, I'm sorry, brother, but somebody came along with a tiny little shrimp fork and scraped all the gray matter outside of my skull. When they put it inside of a dish, it couldn't fill the inside of a hollow pea, but that's okay. I love Jesus. Praise God. And we, as part of the body, need to pray fervently, which I do, for people to awaken to these things. Because otherwise, we're going to be in the streets killing ourselves. Because we're listening to prophets who are doing teachings about why we are allowed to use guns, which is a lie from the devil. But we are in that place, and it is my calling to be not part of the mainstream. Uh, you know, and again, I don't even know if I can pull this up fast enough to make it worthwhile, but I'll try. Uh, I collect these things because I know that the Lord impresses these things upon my heart. Uh, but again, uh, here, hold on just a second. Let me see. Ooh, boop, doobie, 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 doo, oh, look out here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Because the majority ain't going to make it to the be, – many are called, few are chosen. And that includes everybody out there. I don't care how much they cry. I don't care how much they use the terms, brothers and sisters, I implore you. And their tears are rolling down their eyes. If we don't understand this moray, this word of wisdom, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. If you don't apply that to your walk, well, guess what? You're putting yourself in jeopardy, and you are definitely potentially reducing your inheritance and rewards in heaven. It's not about heaven or hell. It's inheritance and rewards. We need to be calm. We need to be Nepho, and we need to love Jesus and be full of love and laughter and smiling and joy and understand the difference. Now, does it not mean that you don't pray? No. Does it not mean that you that you don't go through periods where you're bringing in the sheaves through your tears and seeking the Lord? No. We we do all of the above. But we got to keep it together. Because if we're not keeping it together and we're in those crowds. If we have fear in our heart, we are not behaving. We're as it says in John uh 1 John 3 7 and 8. Um you know, it says uh, he, he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he Jesus is righteous. But he who sins willfully and habitually is of the devil. Well, if Second Timothy one seven says God has not given us a spirit, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and sound mind, then guess what fear comes from? Fears of the devil. So now you have become First John one, First John three eight. He who sins willfully and habitually is of the devil. Of the devil doesn't mean that you belong to the devil. Of the devil means that you are reacting because of demonic influences in your life and because you're operating out of the flesh at that moment in time. So when we get these things together and we understand, so again, we have an impact level one issue and a response level 12. That is very sobering because if this follows suit, in the human impact consideration, when the next event occurs, whatever that may be, let's say it's a, just for grins and giggles, let's call it an impact level five event, another 9-11-ish like event. If we were to apply the principles of linear math to that, five plus 12 would be, the response level would be at a 17. Okay, that would be a linear response. A linear response with a response level at 17 as compared to 12, which is what we're seeing today, arguably. A 17 response level is so insane that people will be killing themselves over the toilet paper. Right now, they're just fighting. Get it? Now, let's move the – now, Now, what really occurs is there's what's known as a – there's a, uh, a, a mathematical delta attribute called the horror factor because it's terrorism. These are satanic terrorism issues that God is allowing to unfold because there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole, and he's bringing people in. He's also awakening the bride of Jesus Christ to help them think it through so that we can respond appropriately, which is exactly the opposite of what is happening out there. Oh, no, we need to join Donald Trump's prayer vigil. What, and pray against God's judgments? 
Pray against the progression of the end times events that are coming upon the earth. And, and, and then you can't do that. The Bible says this is going to happen. Pray all you want, but God's still going to do what he's going to do. You think the throne of our Heavenly Father is going to say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Everybody out there is joining Donald Trump, praying for the coronavirus to go away. And, and our Heavenly Father is going to go, you know what? I, you, know, I, you know, that's okay. I'm going to take Revelation 18 out of the Bible. I'm going to rip out Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to take out Jeremiah 50 and 51. You know what? There's too many people praying. I'm going to remove those things from the Bible. No, he's not. I'm going to take, make Jesus a liar. And in Mark 13, Luke 21, uh, Matthew 24, I'm going to take all those things out because, you know what? We can't allow that to happen to them. They're praying. No, he's not going to do that. He's not going to do it. Pray all you want. What we should be praying for is God to use those things to awaken people so that they become saved and righteous in the flux associated with the overreacting of the impact level 12 or 17. I'm sorry, the response level 12 or 17 on that graph. Now, when you take the impact level and you jump it up to an eight, oh, no, ground-based nukes, you know, ground-based nukes. Now we have Washington, you know, Seattle, uh, you know, uh, San Francisco, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. They've all been nuked. Oh, no. <laughs> well, now you have an impact level eight. Now where's your, int your response level? How do people respond to that? Oops, you have to add in the horror factor. The horror factor. Kind of like, you know, uh, Apocalypse Now, <laughs> where that crazy, you know, colonel was like in that hut, you know, in the middle of the jungle, and he's going, the horror, the horror, the horror. See, when you add in the horror factor to the impact level eight ground-based nukes, which we know are coming, what you end up with is no longer a linear response. A human response is no longer a, now a 12 or now a 17. When you add in the horror factor, where does it come from? Well, it's because you've been programmed over years and years of time. You know what happens. You, you, you know what's going to happen. Oh, no, there's Fallout, the Jericho TV series. I have to watch it again. Jericho, that's the name of it, TV series. Watch it again because I guarantee you there are prophetic there's prophetic information in that TV series that we all need to know. And I'm going to watch it again. I bought it on DVD, and I'm going to sit down, and now I'm going to study it. Because our Father uses these things to warn his saints. We need to know. When you inject the horror factor into a eight impact issue, like ground-based nukes, guess what happens? The human response attribute now goes logarithmic. Now, if you don't know what logarithmic means, linear means that they both progress together. As the impact goes up, the human response goes up. As the impact gets greater, the human response gets greater. But when you add in the horror factor and the response goes logarithmic, what, means, what it means is the impact is an eight, but the horror attribute enters in and the response goes to 175. These are the things that the serpents know. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Serpents know these things. And God is lifting his hands gently, gently, for his mercy endures forever, for his mercy endures forever. And our Father lifts his hands of protection. Sorry, Seven Mountains people, but you dorked up. Sorry. Sorry, people calling us doom and gloomers, but you dorked up. Sorry. Sorry, pillow prophets telling everybody that Jesus has remarried America and everything's going to be fine. Sorry. Coronavirus proved you wrong. And if you have envy, but a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So I'm going to explain the analogy of the fire in the theater problem because we're all going to experience it. And I want to share these things because I've had people say, praise Jesus, um, because they're like your analogies really help me get my mind around these problems because they're complex. They're complex. Here's the fire, fire in the theater problem. All right. Praise God. And kids, are you following along so far? All right. Smartest Jesus kids in the world. All right. Hallelujah. You're good. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I was on a totally different track. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? 
Run to Costco! Play golf. Run to Costco! Go shopping. Run to Costco! Go out to dinner and don't worry about it. (laughs) Wow. Wait until the real stuff hits. The response factor will be through the roof beyond any – this is programming, folks. This is all programming. And whether Donald Trump is part of it or whether he is being used as a puppet, if he is being used as a puppet, boy, oh, boy, is he a great puppet. He's sucking so many into Trumpianity, manga, manga, manga stuff. He's Oh, I've seen so many really anointed, blessed Christians that have been doing this for 10 years sucked into the riptide of Trumpianity. It is amazing. But God looks upon the heart, First Samuel 16, 7b. And don't even get me going on the Netflix documentary, The Family. Government officials that are part of a collective, heavily funded by covert funds, and they believe they are chosen. And it looks legit to the vast majority of evangelical leaders. And so they jump on the bandwagon. They jump on the bandwagon. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect Mark Twain. Fire in the theater analogy. Watch out for this, folks, because you're going to see it. In the days ahead, you're going to see it. I promise you, with all of my heart, I don't do this for any – do you think I would not like to be – it's a beautiful, sunny, 75-degree day outside here in lovely Tampa, Florida at the Golden J.I.B. Jesus and Broadcasting Studios. Do you think I would not be out like to be out riding bike or meeting with a friend for my birthday, maybe having some chicken wings, you know, on, on a nice sunny porch somewhere? Think I wouldn't prefer that, right? Of course I would. I'm doing this to help people. It's the only reason I've ever done the radio show in the first place. And believe me, everything, just like when Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword. He wasn't talking about a real metal sword. He was talking about concepts, concepts that are beyond, that create division. Concepts of love that create division because we live in the flesh. I am here to be as much like Jesus as I know how to be. And if that means separating myself unto holiness away from all the prophets on YouTube, I shall do that. I shall do that. If it means reducing the audience to five people, I shall do that. I shall do that. Because it's not about quantity. It's about quality. I would rather bring five people that acted like Jesus to the Lord and say, here we are. We've washed each other's feet. We don't think of each other more highly than another. We love each other. We've hugged each other through all the ugly. We picked each other up when we fell. And here we are, Lord. And he's going to say, welcome and praise God for you, good and faithful servant. And I would rather have that happen than what's going to happen to the rest. Because it ain't going to be pretty. Now, Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the fire in the theater analogy. Watch out for this. This is going to get you run over. Me too. I was really thinking about not doing a program today at all. Heavily thinking about it. Because I was like, I don't want, I am I am a non-drama individual. I don't care about your drama. It's not that I don't care and I don't want to give you a hug and I don't want to encourage you. It's just that I don't have, I have too much drama. And you've got to draw the line. Look, Jesus, if Jesus would have let himself get sucked into the drama as he was walking through the multitudes, he could not have completed his mission. It would have been absolutely impossible for him to, occur, to complete his mission on the earth. Likewise, that applies to us. We need to not get sucked into the riptide of the dramas associated with our walk, because if we do, it will greatly limit our ability to touch the multitudes. Fire in the theater analogy. Let's apply the fire in the theater analogy to the coronavirus problem. And let's also consider it in regard to the things that are coming upon the earth. Shall we? 
wise as serpents. Amen? Judge the prophecies. Now, know your Bible. All right. Fire in the theater. You're in an AMC theater and you work for the theater. So that working for the theater would be a, would be equivalent to being a servant of God. Okay? And being in the theater is being part of you're stuck in the world, but you're still a servant of God. So you're kind of working for the theater which belongs to God. But you're in a theater full of people of the world. Some of them are Christians, little C Christians. But because you work for the theater, which belongs to God, you are a servant of God, Matthew 22. And you're trying to help people see that there's something greater, a wedding supper, eternity, love and light. We are not citizens of the earth. We are citizens of heaven. We're sojourners. You're trying to help them see that because you work for the office of God. So you work for your servants of the great king in Matthew 22. But you're surrounded by unbelievers and you're surrounded by little C Christians all throughout the theater. The theater is packed with unbelievers and little C Christians. Now, as the movie is going, which is the movie of life, the movie of life, the bulb and the projector in the theater pops. Boom! Pop! And all of a sudden, the screen goes dark. And now everybody's stirring. What is going on? What is going on? And the fear is rising, bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up. And now, a tiny wisp of smoke gently flows down upon the masses. It's a teeny, weeny little mist, wisp of smoke. Very small. And somebody in the masses smells the smoke from the popped light bulb and says, Fire! <laughs> and everybody in the theater, everybody in the theater, the good and the bad, the little sea Christians, and maybe even some of the big sea Christians, go, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is terrible, and they all start running for the door, but you, who is a servant of God, is trying to help them be wise as a serpent and see the truth, and that this is really a deception, and it's preparing us for the things that are coming upon the earth, and you, you stand up in the midst of the crowd, and you say, brothers and sisters, and guess what happens? You get run over. You get run over. You will get stomped to death. Did you know that in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, it talks about Timothy? In the Fox's Book of Martyrs, it talks about Timothy and how Timothy, you know, Paul's understudy, it talks about how he had – the reason why he died was because there was a pagan parade going out. Across, I know, you know, in Ephesus, there was a pagan parade, and, and you know, very much like you know Mardi Gras, and uh, homosexuals and all that kind of weird, creepy stuff, and you know, demon and witches and warlocks and all that kind of, and floats and things, and they're like dun 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 ba 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 ba, and all this stuff, and so you know, and toilet paper rolls are throwing, pun intended, toilet paper rolls are throwing, flying up in his beads going everywhere, and Timothy decides that he's going to go out and tell them a thing or two. You shouldn't do it be doing this. This is an abomination to God. And the pagans jumped down off the floats and they beat him to death. Timothy gets beat to death. Now he didn't die right away. He's in excruciating pain. They, you know, the other believers drug him in, you know, to wherever under protection, but eventually he died from internal bleeding. Now then, let's apply it to today. Christians go down to Mardi Gras. They stand on the side of the streets. 
the pagan parades are going by. And homosexuals half dressed are doing all this, that, and the other thing. LGBT, LMNOP, protected by the law of Nebuchadnezzar in the land that is supposedly blessed by God, which is not. And then. Christians stand there and throw Bibles at them, whipping Bibles at them. You shouldn't be doing this in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. There is no love there. Their behaviors are aberrant, but they think they're doing God a service. And they're throwing their Bibles at the, and the homosexuals and the LGBT element appears, jump down off the floats and kick them to death. Now, examine that with the holy and righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ and eternal inheritance and rewards, should that believer not have taken another choice? Do you understand where I'm heading with this? I pray in Jesus' name that you do. Because the days that we are in ahead, we better be nimble on our feet. We better be discerning holy and righteousness and know our Bibles like the back of our hands and not be paying attention to the people on YouTube and Facebook and be very careful what we listen to and know our Bibles. We've got to know our Bibles, know our Bibles, know our Bibles, know our Bibles. Right, kids? We've got to know our Bibles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, wake up! Jesus, when Jesus said there will be many false prophets in those days, there will be people saying, you know, here, here are Jesus, there are Jesus everywhere, Jesus, Jesus. That also applies to the YouTubers out there. It also applies to the Facebook pages out there. Here are Jesus. No, it's not a Jesus. Here are Jesus, there are Jesus. No, it's not a Jesus, Jesus. It's not. It's people that might be trying to do their best but are misguided. And if you don't have that biblical foundation, you will not know any better. And what will happen is you will get run over by the people in the theater. I'm not saying you're going to hell. That's not what I'm talking about. No, Siri, I'm not. This is about inheritance and rewards, being wise as a serpent. When your works are tested by fire, what sort, what quality they are, you will receive a reward. But if they are burned by the fire, you will receive a loss trying to help people understand these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13, 14, 15, 16. It goes all the way to 17. Focus, the focus point is 14 and 15. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. So on that note, because it's my birthday and the kids are listening, and this is all about the kids today, praise God, we're going to review some... Things that I hope make a little bit of a smile on your face. We've already reviewed the numbers. We've already reviewed the evidence associated with the prophecies that have been incorrect. Not false necessarily, uh, but prophecies that have been incorrect. Tons and tons and tons and tons of them. Oh, my goodness. Do we need to judge the prophecies? <sighs> wow. What an admonishment. Jade Helm. Houston flooding. So many more. And why is the serpents love and love and know what the difference between 1 Corinthians 5 and judging somebody in a church and pulling them aside lovingly and saying, brother, you can't like have purple hair and, you know, all that. You got to like be part of the body of Christ. Do it lovingly in private. Two or three witnesses. But people don't understand love. Paul wasn't telling them to jump up on a podium and humiliate them. He was telling them to do like the Amish do. Do like the Amish do. And shun them. That they would feel repentant and come back with normal hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is not complicated. And God gives us examples of these things in our daily walk. Does HR, does human resources come out? No, look, I'm not saying this is there's, – there's attributes of Satan woven in. God, Satan has twisted everything of God on this earth to his avail. So there is an element of evil associated with all things on the earth. But again – Timothy 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure. So those of us who are pure in heart and spirit and love and humility through Christ can see the fingerprint of God. That's what it's talking about. 
So when you see that we are being trained for eternity, you've got to be able to see that everything around you is part of that training. And then when you see that human resources, when a person has been bad in the, in, in the, in the sea of cubicles that you've been assigned to, and that person has bad, been bad, they take them away into a quiet place. And they say, uh, you've been bad, and we're letting you know that you've been naughty. You haven't followed the governance and the rules of our society here, Romans 13. And so we're letting you know in private so as not to humiliate you. See, that's how the church is to behave. The problem is they don't want to humiliate anybody, so they don't do anything at all about it. Or they take the opposite side, and they humiliate, and they throw Bibles at them. They whack them on the head and get beaten to death and die from internal bleeding. The problem is it's somewhere in the middle. You die. If you don't eat any salt, you die. That is the wisdom of our walk. The answer isn't A, B, or C. It's all of the above. And until we can reconcile all of the above, we're going to be forever lost in the days ahead. It doesn't matter that the only reason the people are running out of the theater and killing each other on the way out of the theater was a tiny little light bulb popping. You have to have the wisdom to know when to get out of the way. No, when to not throw the Bibles into the into the parade floats of the LGBT element appears, because you have a lot more work to do. That's why Jesus said, "Don't throw your pearls before the swine." It's not talking about other believers. It's talking about not whipping Bibles at the LGBT element appears in the Mardi Gras parade for crying out loud. Oh no, you're saying that Timothy made a mistake? Yep, I am. I am. Before God, I am. I love everything I've ever heard about Timothy, but I think that if he had thought it through a little bit better, he could have done a lot more wonderful things for Jesus if he hadn't gone out and, you know, gone right after. Sometimes you got to – look, even David Hogan at the end of his testimony, he was told by God in the end of his testimony in the jungle, I highly recommend, you know, um, Faith to Raise the Dead, David Hogan. At the very end of his testimony where he was told by God to go into the jungle and go into this hut where there were these Uga Chaga, you know, evil uh, witch doctors, and to bring one of them back to life, he didn't really think for a moment that David Hogan wanted to do that. No, of course he didn't. He was being obedient to the Lord. And out of love through Christ, David Hogan was commanded to bring the, the, the the dead witch doctor who was dead on the floor. While wow, the rest of them were going, ooga, chaga, ooga, 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 chaga, ooga, ooga. They're like casting curses on him and stuff. And he's like, in the name of Jesus, I command you, come back. And he would like wrap his arms around the man. Took him like four tries. But he was obedient to the Lord. And the witch doctor came back to life. And then the Lord God said to David Hogan, grab everybody in your party and run as fast as you can. And Hogan grabbed them all and said, the Lord told me to run. And they ran down the pathway through the jungle as fast as they can. And the entire uh, hut blew up into a huge fire that shot up into the sky, lit up the whole area. An explosion of demonic fire. Why do you suppose the Lord told David Hogan to do that? And who survived that fire? Maybe all of them did. Maybe only two were brought to heaven. Or maybe one of them turned into a missionary and went amongst the peoples and told them what happened and how Jesus had brought their witch doctor and evil magic to the light and love of Christ. That's how God works. Fire in the theater. We are seeing a lot of fire in the theater, and we're going to see a lot more of it in the days to come. Oh my. This coronavirus thing is so irrelevant in the grand scheme of the things that we've been told are coming. It is just absolutely amazing. 
praise God. And on that note, kids, are you ready for a little bit of, I don't know, happiness and joy? For our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. And then they said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Do we want to be those people? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. All right. And again, a shout out to a, a believer by the name of Elizabeth Evans Parrish and also Kristen Jessroom from for uh, turning me on to these things because I needed to hear it on my birthday because I was about sick up to my sick and tired up to my, I don't know, uh, garbanzo beans of all this craziness. They're practicing, folks. They're setting up FEMA. Look, again. Was the announcement on Fox News, was the announcement announcement on Fox News true? Was that true in regard to China blaming the United States for the coronavirus? I don't know. I don't know. But could it be true? Yes, it could. Yes, it could. Now, all that being said, we need to put on the joy of Jesus and realize this is nothing that is happening to us now and prepare ourselves. Use it to understand. Look, if you live in a part of the country like Brother Lauren Peterson does, uh, you know, in, in South Fork, uh, you know, or, or whatever, uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, you know, and you, you've seen all the craziness and the insanity that has been going on, guess what? You need to walk away, learn it. Why is a serpent? You need to understand that if an impact level one event causes this, what's going to happen when it's a five? You need to get into your house things that you need that will hold you over. I'm not talking about silliness of three years of rations to make through the great, great tribulation. Forget about that. God will put through our faith and prayer and our obedience, he will put food on our tables and fill our pantries full of food when the day comes when no one can work. But that is not now. This is a wonderful learning experience. I've already had these learning experiences through Hurricane Irma and other hurricanes in the past. Living in Florida, I know what it's like to have shelves completely emptied out by crazy, insane, ah, oh no, it's the end of the world. But people in Rapid City, South Dakota don't. People in your neck of the woods don't. So I praise Jesus for this wonderful exercise in awakening the remnant bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we need to learn from this. We need to learn not to throw Bibles at the people in the LGBT element of P floats. We need to not to stand in the way of the charging people running out of the theater because a light bulb popped. We need to be wise, but calm, full of love. And on that note, because it's my birthday, <laughs> and because this is about the kids and you know, finding joy, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, David said in Psalm 51, Lord God, please restore to me the joy of your salvation. And then I will lead others to your salvation. Praise God. And we need to be able to recognize that that's who we are called to be, to have our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. And that's not going to be easy in the days to come. We cannot join in with all the rest. We have got to be holy and separate from all of them, including those who we believe are Christians. Oh, but they're anointed and they're crying on YouTube. No. Oh, but they say Yeshua HaMashiach in their videos. No. Doesn't mean anything. Judge them by their fruits and their understanding of the scripture. Judge their prophecies and their love and their peace. Because when they have peace, that is the quintessential sign of the Holy Spirit. But beware of that, too, because the devil knows how to forge peace. And he will twist his version of peace into a smiling, sly serpent, masquerading as a Christian. And your only hope in that case is an intimate understanding of the Bible. Otherwise, you'll get sucked into that too. Praise God. All right, kids, are you ready? All right, here we go. And I've already given done the shout-outs to the people who came up with these things and found them. All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, listen to this. I love this. 
And some of these are a little, you know, t- it's tongue in cheek. So you got to like try not to get so tied up and, oh, he said that word, you know, kind of thing. Just roll with it, you know, loosen up a little bit. So if you can't loosen up now, you don't even have a shot in the days to come. And all those people with those fake Jesus smiles on their face in your church, watch them fall. They're going to fall like a house of cards. It is us who have been put through the refining fire and are no longer dainty and sensitive to every little word because we're like Pharisees shaking our fingers at one another and saying, you said a naughty, naughty, naughty word. You use that word. Now, oh my gosh, the reconciliation of the saints is going to be horrific. Lord, Lord fake sometimes the grass is always sometimes the grass is always greener because the grass is fake sometimes the grass is greener because the grass is fake god looks upon the heart and he's not expecting perfection we strive for that but a righteous man may fall seven times. God would rather have a tax collector rending his robe and crying out, unworthy and unwilling to even look up at him, than someone who thought they made it. He saved such as have a contrite spirit. Psalm 37. All right. Kids, are you ready? I know. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Okay, here we go. All right, and again, I tip my hat to uh, this this uh, believer, Elizabeth Evans Parish, and Kristen Justrum for hooking me up on these things because I needed it on my birthday. I really did. All right, listen to this. I'd hate to see a, diarr- a diarrhea virus break out right now because uh, people uh, would would be buying up all the nasal spray, kids. <laughs> right? People would be buying up all the nasal spray. Yeah. All right, Uh, here's another one. Kids, has anybody let the Amish know what's going on out here yet? (laughs) Kids? (laughs) Right, exactly. Oh, and folks, by the way, I have to tip my hat to Publix. This is another uh, input from uh, these folks that are looking at these things through uh, peaceful, loving Psalm 126. Our mouths were, were filled from laughter eyes, as they ought to be. Um, oh, I got to tip my hat to the public supermarket because they have come out with a, believe it or not, birthday cake that is shaped like a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Kids, what do you think? <laughs> this is too funny. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Since everyone has started washing their hands like we're supposed to, We'll be working on shapes and colors for the next few weeks. I don't understand that one. And I neither did those, but maybe you do. And kids, I don't know. What do you think about that one? Uh, Shapes and colors? I don't know. But we're just going to rock and roll with it. All right. Let's look at this one here. All right. Praise God. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. All right. Listen to this. If it's out of your hands, it deserves freedom from your mind, too. Oh, now there is wisdom. I like that one. I like that one. All right. Praise God. And then, of course, a picture of Mr. Whipple here uh, on this lady Elizabeth's site. Mr. Whipple. (laughs) Remember Mr. Whipple? You know, it's time to squeeze the Charmin. Well, he's standing there squeezing the Charmin with a big goofy smile on his face. And he says, who's your daddy? (laughs) Praise God. All right. Praise Jesus. All right. Here's another one. Uh, 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 Oh, okay. Society is collapsing around us, but we're looking at funny internet pictures. So true. (laughs) Kids, what do you think? All right. All right. Praise God. Um, I don't even know um, if if I have this one in my list, but before I run out of time, I got to share this one. This one's here is a little, you know, it's a little risque. It uses the F word. So brace yourself. I don't want to get in trouble from Colossians 3.3, 3, the filthy language out of your mouth. And what is, what is the definition of filthy? Does that follow the mores of society? Does it follow the colloquialisms of the 21st century? Does the word crap, is that filthy? Hmm. What about doo-doo? I don't know. Is that filthy? But I'm going to use the F word on this one. Amen? 
All right. Watch out for this one. I think coronavirus. And again, I tip my hat to this lady, Elizabeth Parrish and Kristen, Kristen Jessrum, because I needed this on my birthday, and I pray that you need a little smile, too. Praise God. I'm going to use the F word, so brace yourself. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Glory to Jesus. I used to cough to cover up my farts, but now I fart to cover up my coughs. Coronavirus! Oh, no! Kids! <laughs> oh, no! Praise Jesus! Hallelujah! Ah, you know what? We better get joy in our hearts. We better get things into perspective, or we're not going to make it. We're going to get beaten to death by the LGBT element of peers. We're going to get run over by the people running out of the theater because a light bulb popped. If we don't learn to be compliant to the Bible and understand what's coming and maintain that joy and peace and grace in our hearts, well then, we have another thing coming. And I pray in Jesus' name. Oh yes, indeed, I pray in Jesus' name. That we don't fall into that trap because we have a lot, lot, lot more ahead of us. Glory be to God. 